almost impossible to make what? anything work against somebody the size and strength, as you can see, of Nia Jax. Oh, oh, oh. my God. The Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all species, welcome to our wrestling perspective. If you want to make it your wrestling perspective, hear me out. All you need to do is add why. I oh, know, that was like a really sneaky one that I just did there. But this video is episode 13. Yes, we have reached 13 episodes of our weekly perspective. And you know what our weekly perspective, what the mission was for it? It was to get you into the conversation, just a weekly roundup of professional wrestling. It's just a weird term of events, how this whole pandemic has gone out, but it's great. We'll still cover as much wrestling as we can to give to you and from our perspective. But before we start this video, lest we forget about the ones that have fallen for us, we're talking about the Anzac and it was Anzac Day yesterday. We want to commemorate and remember those brave individuals that put everything on the line for us to have a brighter future may we never forget about them even just the one day seems like it's not enough make sure we remember them all the time because they have done some incredible things to make sure that we are on the path that we are now so our weekly perspective episode 13 will be looking at the whole week of professional wrestling from the 19th of April 2020. See, I nearly biffed it up on that. All the way up to the 26th of April 2020. This whole week and what has unfolded. Yes, it looks like the rest of the pro wrestling community on Twitter has just gone to a standstill at times. Nice. But let's look at the professional wrestling and what stuck out to us. So let's start with the WWE programming and let's move straight on to Monday Night Raw. And what were the five points that stuck out to me? First point for Monday Night Raw, we're talking about Rey Mysterio, Apollo Crews and Alistair Black are on the Raw side to head in to the corporate money in the bank. And you know what? What a weird three to go in. Uh, Apollo Crews, finally he's getting the airtime that he deserves. He's got incredible athleticism and maybe he'll really shine within this ladder match. And there's no doubt in my mind that he will. Rey Mysterio is always a great pick to put in there. And Alistair Black, I, I think he's the heavy hitter. He's like the top one that could take home that briefcase from the raw side. Second point being, that's two of them, two of them on the Aussie counter. Brendan Vink and Shane Fawn. See, I nearly biffed up that name. It's always great to see Aussies represent WWE programming and what a better way than Monday Night Raw, their flagship program, the longest episodic television show in all of history. See, I just did an advertisement then. Third point being another one. We're talking about another Aussie onto the Aussie counter. But it was correct. This one wasn't too crush hot because it was a fallen victim to the submission machine. The Queen of Aces, we're talking about Queen of Spades, Queen of Aces, well, Queen of Spades, we're talking about Shayna Baszler. She just obliterated Indy Artwell. A bit of a snap of the arm ski. Oh, fourth point being roller clip. Almost impossible to make what? anything work against somebody the size and strength as you can see of Nia Jax. Oh, oh. oh my god, the. <laughs> <laughs> That's a putrid display by Nia Jax. Poor Kyrie Sane, poor Kyrie Sane. She could have, like, honestly hurt herself. <sighs> you know what? I'm not going to say anything more because I got told if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Fifth and final point for Monday Night Raw. What stuck out to me? All I got to say, Drew McIntyre has really, like his WWE Championship run, I am really, really behind it. His whole feud with Zelina Vega, their whole promo war. You're a fawn in my backside, fawn in my ass. I love every part of it. Because Drew McIntyre, just the way that he has no cares because he wants to represent the gold and he's not letting anyone take it from him. And the alliance that is Austin Fury, Andrade, and Ang Angel Gaza, whatever they say, Angel Gaza, it's terrific to see. I'm loving this whole feud stuff. And if people were there, they'd be chanting as loud as hell. And you see that pose that he did with the Tranquilo. Love it. See a fly pass? 
Now after Monday Night Raw, we move straight on to the Wednesday Night War between NXT and AEW. I try to look more official, I look a more classy referee, don't I mate? Yeah, no, you don't look like a referee whatsoever mate. What do you mean? No, I look great, alright? You have to agree with me, otherwise you can go out. No mate, it was only a joke. No need to get so serious. See? So do I look classy? Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Exactly. But, let's, let's talk about it. Let's do this! I always say this, you can love all professional wrestling, but some weeks you may have a preference in what you watch on the Wednesday night. It may be that the black and gold brand NXT did it for you, or it could have been that All Elite brand, All Elite Wrestling Dynamite that did it for you this week. We've got to find out what were the three points that stuck out to us. We'll do three points against three points, and who are we going to start off with? We'll find out. It's NXT. XT. First point being, did you see that Velveteen Dream promo on Finn Balor? How he's like, the prince never picked me up. The whole way that they put that promo, whoo, Velveteen Dream knows what's up. And he's gold as it is. Hopefully, he reaches the NXT Championship sooner than later. Second point being for NXT, the black and gold brand, we're talking about the interim cruiserweight championship tournament. It has been fantastic. Tony Nese versus Kushida. And then we saw Drake Atlas. The Drake Atlas. Wow. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Drake Maverick versus Jake Atlas. And you know what? I really enjoyed this match. The whole emotion from both sides going into this match, even though Jake Atlas won. He was still rooting for Drake Maverick. You know what? At the end of the day, it was great to see this match because of the emotion that Drake Maverick had into it. These are his last final matches, sadly as it is. But it seems like he's still giving that 100%. And third and final point for NXT, Tom Phillips. Well done, mate. Did you hear what he said at the very end? He said... Adam Cole has pinned the NXT Champion, Adam Cole. What can we say? Great way to end NXT. Now time to light the fuse because we're heading over to Dynamite. All Elite Wrestling, what was the points that stuck out to me? First point being the Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen match was absolutely fantastic. It, it seems like the evolution of growth within All Elite Wrestling has been purely shown within this match, even though the referee kind of hiccup like, yeah, we'll allow a ladder, but, you know, rope breaks and all this stuff. You know what? I enjoy that either way. It looked like they actually gave each other hell, and I wouldn't be uh, too mad if uh, Darby won the belt and, uh, you know, not only won the TNT Championship, but also... Went up against Sammy one more time, but this time actually have it as a ladder match since he dived on him as a ladder, and there were some brutal spots in there. All right, next point. Second point being for All Elite Wrestling, Paul Lee Johnson, may you rest in peace after what Wardlow did. This is war. This is war. You know what? His theme song needs a bit more oomph because the way that he walks out looking like a silverback machine. Whoo! But then I was thinking, what if him and Brian Cage teamed up and all the cyborgs? I've got to stop fantasy booking. I'm only a ref. And third and final point, I honestly reckon that even though Dustin Rhodes has put on the best performance and he put his career up to get to the next round to face Lance Archer, it's not going to get him to the final because my prediction, my prediction, is Lance Archer versus Darby Allen for the TNT Championship because Cody will be screwed once again. So ding a ding a ding, who won it for me this week? Was it NXT or was it All Elite Wrestling Dynamite? And all I have to say, it was none other than that black and gold brand yeah take another shot because i said none other well the black and gold brand did it for me this week purely because they threw everything against the wall and yeah i know it's pretty struggling times with all elite wrestling showing their pre-tapes and i want to get to eventually live it doesn't really matter because they're still putting on great shows it's just preferably for me this week even killer cross shot uh, rocking up the whole candace Larray and johnny gargano on the same page that they want to be the first couple to take over nxt it's a pretty interesting to me, that's why they stuck out to me. Now moving straight on to NXT UK. To the wrong part. Yes, 
I know the cameraman doesn't need to tell me this time. It was another replay, so you know what? I'm going to mention one of my favourite moments from NXT UK right now. And it would have to be that shock element when Jordan Devlin was meant to go up against Travis Banks, but that didn't take on fold. And he ended up being Finn Balor up against the guy that he taught that he mentored through professional wrestling, Jordan Devlin. I really liked that match, and there's been some incredible matches, but every week I'll mention one moment that I like. Even though I'm not a fan of Finn Bella, I really enjoyed that moment. Now moving straight on to the Friday, and what's on that Friday? We're talking about that SmackDown on Fox. What were the five points that stuck out to me? Bugger off, fly, first point that stuck out to me. You know, wait a minute, I've got to do this. The Forgotten Sons, they're really OP. They should have got a main roster shove it a bit more earlier, huh? Oh, do I still say main roster? But then they say, oh, we are not your kind, you're confusing. Do you want to be considered the... I'm not going to say anymore. Forgotten Sons, OP. Hopefully they don't take it from the tag belts off New Day anytime soon because I just got it back on New Day. Don't be taking it off my boys. My boys. Second point that stuck out to me, we're talking about Lacey Evans and Baron Corbin. Sorry, King Corbin have finally qualified for the corporate money in a bunk. And all i got to say, you know what? I'll have my odds on King Corbin. And whether you like it or not, when he did hold that Universal Championship up on his shoulder that time, it actually suited the way how he had the whole suits and all that going on now. And you know what? Braun, he looks like, it looks like a little toy figure belt on his just big physique and I reckon it would look nice on a Corbin but I really want to back on a fiend. Why am I talking about Corbin as champion? Isolation has really got to me, huh? Third point being, can anyone hate anyone as much as Seamus hates Michael Cole? Every week he just goes up to him on the commentary table, gives him the biggest evil eye and then takes off his headset. You know what? Uh, I, he says that he's sick of all of these people when he was talking in the hallway with the dim light. Then he comes out versus a Shorty Gable. Uh, Shorty G's nowhere to be seen. He versus Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews got bent that bad and moved on to Monday Night Raw, but now he's getting a push into Money in the Bank scene. And now he's shooting with Michael Cole. The second last point, which is the fourth point that stuck out to me for SmackDown on Fox, I just realised because since Eric Rowan and Luke Harper are gone, sadly, from the WWE, more sadly because Eric Rowan and the way that he got given a spider, but you know what, moving on, Braun and Bray Wyatt, they remind me of the new version of Kane and The Undertaker of this modern era, and just hear me out, Braun's like the modern day Kane, yeah, he has title belt reigns, but it's not to the point where they're really, really visible. Like his universal brain was all slapped together like Kane okay, won the WWF at that time. And how Bray Wyatt persones himself now and how he keeps on changing, they're the new brothers of destruction. And that's how I've seen it. Maybe I was late to the party, but at least I'm at the party. Fifth and final point for SmackDown on Fox. It ended with the main event of the 25 year anniversary of the cerebral assassin, the King of Kings. The creator and destroyer, Triple H. He was in a main event with the segment. Oh, you know what? It was funny for what it was. At parts, it was really cringy. And that's bad for me to say because it was DX in the ring. And some of their parts, I'm like, uh, more Road Dog was more on key for me. I'm like, I love the Road Dog segment. And how Vince McMahon came out and just shut down shop around them. Half of the time, I'm like, what? This is a right. Uh, okay. Huh? Now moving on to other wrestling. With other wrestling, we move straight on to Impact Wrestling and the Rebellion Week slash Day One and what happened for that. There were four points that stuck out to me. Yeah, four points that stuck out for me for an Impact slash episode, that pay-per-view that didn't work out. Still empty audience. Who cares? First point being, we see a crazy Steve return, but he aligns himself with Rhino and Tommy Dreamer as the violent trio that take on OVE. But OVE OVE, that's what something I'm going to get onto a bit shortly. But second point, let's move on to that. And apparently Tessa Blanchard stuck in Mexico. Eddie Edwards looks like he has a, sounds like he has a stuffed nose, a bit of the flu. And Michael Elgin's like, I'm going to be champion by the end of Rebellion. So it's really confusing. But you know what? Are they going to do a whole interim? Cl classify a new world champion? This sucks just because of the pandemic thing. But you know that Tessa would want to be there and just shooting magnums everywhere she goes. Third point that stuck out to me, we're talking about Willie Mack. 
Return of the Mac. Whoa, oh, Return of the Mac. He finally beats the Triple X Division Champion in Ace Austin and he captures the X Division Championship himself. We're talking about it's the age of the Mac because Willie Mac is now your X Division Champion. Rich Swan is still happy for him and saying, how about we go for those double belts? And you know what? Willie is double champion, double title Willie. Why not? And the fourth and final point that stuck out to me was the Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock main event. Not just purely of the result basis, just because of how OVE and Sammy Callahan split. Okay, take this as you as you may. All right. A madman and a tag team that have been with Sammy forever. Couldn't take down the one guy. I'm kind of upset that Sammy left OVE. <sighs> Hopefully this hacker stuff does something, has something good at least. Now moving on to Major League Wrestling Super Series Week 3. And the first point that stuck out to me. You know the AAA referees there. A little bit. Not a little bit. They're really biased. The way that they treat the international talent from MLW was pretty disgusting if you ask me. It looks like the Mexican referees from AAA are really a part of Team Filthy. Yeah, I try for laughs sometimes. The second point that stuck out to me, I've got to say, you know La Parker's, uh, or LA Park, his shows, like, first week it was a cooking show with his son, now it's bedtime show with, I'm guessing, his partner telling him to wake up and... What? And third and final point we're talking about, MLW is finally two points up in the Super Series because it's currently 4-2 and the Hart Foundation have returned. Brian Pillman Jr. and David Hart Smith have finally come back together. It's pretty shocking that Teddy Hart's still not there, but it's great to have them there. And I'd love to see him add another second generation superstar, but who? Who could it be? And what do I have to say superstar? Sorry, wrestler. And that was our weekly perspective, episode 13. All I gotta say, thank you so much to the whole OWP Galaxy. You have supported us through this. You give me the motivation to get up in the morning and produce something great for you. Well, also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. You know, that big thumbs up. If you don't want to give it a thumbs up, that's all good because you know what else you can do? If you want to go further than a thumbs up, you can hit that red button, which is a subscribe yeah a subscribe ski so you add a bit of polish there huh i'm not polish and the last but not least if you want to spank that notification bell and that keeps you aware and up to date on what our next moves are and when we want to upload a new episode of our weekly perspective or a sneak peek of something in the future yeah wait hold on hair flick we have got some things in store for you but also, I have to say, if you want more than just the YouTube side, you can head straight over to our Facebook. The Facebook emblem's there. It's our wrestling perspective. We had trivia contests, and yes, the first prize was a world belt. The other two prizes, the videos are heading to you very shortly. But if the Facebook isn't the thing that you like, and you're more of a twiddle, tw twiddle, if you're more of a Twitter person, you go straight onto Twitter and went at OWP YouTube. And you can find us there with a couple throwback tweets and a couple retweets. A sucker for retweeting old matches and old spots. So, if you want to follow us on those social media platforms, that would be fantastic. But all I have to say, make sure to stay safe, wash them hands, sanitize, and yeah. Um, do you have anything to say, mate?